Hi friends, welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny and we live and garden here in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. Today I'm trying something that I have never, ever in my life tried before. I'm gonna try to plant and grow garlic and sweet yellow onions. Come with me and let's figure this out. When I had these planting beds installed a couple of weeks ago, the idea was that I would have planting area out in the middle of my backyard. My backyard is surrounded by mature trees, so I don't get a ton of full sun, but the area in the backyard where I do get the most sun is right in the middle. So that's why I planted, or that's why we had these planting beds installed, so that I could grow things that require full sun. At least I could attempt to grow things that require full sun because still, even with moving this and having this out in the middle of the lawn, it's not full sun, it's at best part sun, but this is the most sun that I can do in my backyard. So I'm gonna be trying vegetables, especially in this upper bed. I have three of them down the hill and this upper one I am setting aside for vegetables. The middle one, I have uh, strawberries in it already and I have planted some cut flowers in there. And the lower one I'm currently using as a nursery bed or a hospital bed or a holdover place, holding, holding tank area for plants that I need to find permanent homes in the landscape, but I haven't yet. But in the future, that lower one also will be used for either cut flowers or vegetables, depending on what the sun does for me next year in 2023, because I'm not exactly sure exactly how much sun these beds are gonna get and what kind of vegetables might thrive here. So I'm kind of taking it slow on that lower one, but the upper two, I've got veggies in the top one, cut flowers in the middle one. Okay, so that means that I'm gonna be planting some onions and garlic in this top bed, my veggie bed. I've never grown any sort of garlic, any sort of um, onions before. I've been watching a ton of YouTube videos about things that I can sow in the fall that might survive our winter with or without some protection and then crop for me next spring or early summer. And I have determined, I believe, I think I've learned that garlic and yellow onions fall into that category. I should be able to plant this garlic and these onions now, which is here we are on, I believe today's the 15th or 16th of October. I should be able to plant them now, have them probably not sprout before our first frost. Um, they'll live in the ground, they'll start to grow their roots, and then next spring, late winter, early spring, they'll start to grow. I'll see them emerge probably in the late winter, and then over the course of the spring season, they'll grow, and then they'll be ready to harvest sometime in the early summer. At least that's what I think. I don't really know. I live here in zone 7B technically, which means that our average low temperature in the winter is zero degrees Fahrenheit. Um, but what that means also is, you know, there are zone 7B here in Baltimore. There's zone 7B in Georgia also, and all down throughout the South across the country. It goes in a band. It hits Oklahoma, it hits uh, California. There's parts up in Washington state, there's zone seven. So zone seven doesn't mean I'll be able to do this. What, what I need to worry about is how many days or nights actually are in those low cold temperatures. Down in Georgia, you might get one, two, maybe three nights down in the, in the um, very, very cold temperature. If you get down to zero, it's probably only gonna be once and it's probably not gonna be for a prolonged time. Most of your winter in Georgia is gonna be lows in the 30s, maybe highs in the 40s or 50s or 60s even during the winter. Here, we get a lot more hours of cold than you do in a, a further south zone seven. So that's the difference between trying to grow the same thing in one area that is zone seven and another area that's zone seven. The winters are very different even if we are in the same zone. Okay, so I've studied and I uh, have read and I've watched and I think I know what I'm doing. The garlic. Now, these come in uh, already separated garlic cloves. Uh, there's, I believe, five, four or five, yeah, five in this package. These were quite expensive, actually. I went to the garden center to try to find garlic and they had already sold out. And what they did was they repackaged and um, came up with a little package of five garlic sets. I paid $5. So $1 each for these garlic sets. So I know that's crazy expensive and I won't be doing that again, but I was desperate. I wanted to find some garlic. And you know, you could buy some garlic at the grocery store, especially if you get the organic garlic. 
I'm just not sure if they have uh, been treated in some way that makes them not good for growing in the garden. That's what I've heard. That's what I've kind of understood. Take your chances. I don't know. Anyway, so I paid premium for these garlic sets. I won't be doing that again. Uh, and then I also got this package of yellow onion. These are yellow super sweet onions. I paid $5 for these also, but I believe I got 10 for that price. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, maybe even eleven. Yeah, bonus. All right, so I think I plant them in the ground. First of all, you need to prepare your soil. It needs to be organically rich and it needs to have a lot of nutrients in it. I'm going to be using plant tone from Espoma because that's what I have in my garage. I have biotone, I have plant tone. Those are the two fertilizers I happen to have on me right now. I don't think it matters a ton which fertilizer you use. Um, organic is good if you feel that way. And then I'm going to be top dressing and mixing in with a lot of compost. Uh, this compost is basically uh, leaf mold, essentially a little bit of mushroom compost mixed in. So lots of organic matter. Garlic and onions are heavy feeders, and so you really need to prepare your planting space with a lot of nutrients for them. Okay, and then you plant them in rows. You plant them four inches deep, so a nice deep hole, probably, you know, as big as, you know, as far down as I can poke with my two fingers. And then you just cover them up. You plant them, uh, I think this says, this says one inch deep, four inches apart, but I don't believe that. I think I'm going to put them a little deeper than that four inches apart and then the onions want to be planted four inches apart 12 inches between rows and it says again just press them in so that the point of the onion remains above the soil that's not what I've been seeing youtubers do online so um, I don't know uh, Epic Gardener just, I watched his video last night, he planted his garlic four inches deep. I think Laura from Garden Answer just lays them on top of the soil and then pokes them down with her finger. Uh, maybe I'll do some of both kinds. Maybe I'll do some a little deeper than others and see which ones are better. I don't know. This is all a grand experiment. I really have never done this before and I'm trying to learn from people who are online. Uh, but you know, the best experience is just getting out there and trying to do it yourself and see what you come up with. So that's what I'm going to do. Now, onions and garlic. If you follow Brie the Plant Lady from Raleigh, North Carolina, she is all about foodscapes, which means that she integrates food production into her landscape. She uses garlic uh, every year as a border around the front of her flower beds so that it keeps the rabbits and the deer off of her flower beds. And she has a lot of success with that. I don't happen to care for the way that looks in the landscape, so I'm not choosing to do mine that way. However, if you want to find a good way to keep animals off of your landscape, you might try that trick. Border your um, flower beds with garlic. I'm going to be planting mine here in this bed. The way I'm going to go crazy with it is I'm actually going to do mine in a sort of a design because why not, right? I don't know. I'm going to let the spirit move me. We'll see what happens. Let's take a real quick look and see what we already have growing in this garden. Over on that edge, um, I have four broccoli plants and four cabbage plants and they're doing very well. We've not had a frost yet. I do see that they're getting new leaves on them and so they're doing really well. That's excellent. Okay, and then here, I'm gonna step in the bed where I know I haven't planted anything. Here, I ran out of markers, so I ringed them with stones. I have three holes where I planted some komat komatsuna, which is a Japanese green, like mustard, and I see they are coming up. So that's excellent. One, two, this one, I don't see yet, but it'll come, I promise. Well, I hope. All right, so three rings of komatsuna, four plants of uh, cabbage, four plants of broccoli. I'm going to have tons of weed seeds from that bird seed there. Um, and then over here, I shouldn't have done what I did because <laughs> I made little, little designs. I have two rows of radish following this curve right here. One of them's coming up really well. The other one is starting to come up. Behind that, I have a row of lettuce that has not yet started to emerge. Over here, I don't remember. I'm going to have to go back to the video and look, but I think I... Oh, yeah, here we go. This is mescaline uh, mix, so I'm going to use this as a cut and come again. 
lettuce and they have started to come up in a big round blob. And then around that, I remember now, I planted some butter crunch lettuce going back in a curve that way. So I got all creative with curves and blobs and circles and paisley patterns and all that, which I think is fun, totally fun, except now. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, I don't remember where I planted them and they haven't all come up yet, so I'm gonna have to be careful when I put the onions in here, but I do wanna do something fun with the onions as well. I might go ahead and plant um, the onions and garlic kind of along, can I do this in mirror image? There we go, along, no, I can't do it in mirror image, <laughs> along the back side of this bed to kind of border along there to keep the spring rabbits out. I might choose that or I might do something a little bit more creative. I don't know, we'll see. We're down here at the end of the season and I can't find any matching gloves. So here we are. Does this happen to you too? I'm hoping it does. I'm not the only one, right? Yeah. Okay, so I have a bucket here of compost and I think I'm going to make a border of garlic down this way and then behind it, I'll plant a row of onions. Um, I mentioned in a previous video about these beds that uh, they're very big and I'm going to have to come up with a plan for how to walk in amongst these beds without crushing my soil and ruining my soil health. For now, I'm winging it. I do walk in there, but uh, you know, that will evolve. I'll just say that. Okay, so my lettuce row is here and it goes around that way. So I think what I'm going to do is... I'm in my soil along this bed, like this. You know what? I might want to pull that closer to the edge because the garlic, garlic can go right here. It doesn't have to be that far in, so. See that? Nothing like changing your plan midstream, huh? All right, that's gonna be where I put the garlic. And then I think I'm going to do the same for the onions. Yep. I'm using the Spoma Plant Tone all-purpose fertilizer. Now, these onions want to be four inches apart. I think I made my rows too long because I only have ten. Four inches apart is 40 inches. That's less than four feet. So. There we go. So I have extra room down there I'm not going to need. All right, and I'm going to space my onions the same way. They also want to be four inches apart. This is a little further than four inches apart, but I think that's okay. Yeah, I have one extra. I have 11 of those. Okay, so now I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go along and press them down, pointy side up, root side down into the soil. I'm just going to take my finger, make a hole, put that down in there, pointy side up, and cover it up. And to the extent that my finger isn't strong enough, I'll use my thumb. Pointy side up, cover it up. If I had a dibber, I'd use a dibber. I don't have a dibber, I have a finger. I'll use my finger. Again, if you look at the bulb, you can see this is where the root was. This is the pointy side. This goes up, this goes down. These are not all going down four inches. Some of them are going down two inches. Some of them are going down roughly one inch. Grand experiment, folks. There we go. Oh no, look, here's one more. I missed it. Now I don't I don't happen to have any uh, plant markers left right now, so I'm gonna do you know creative and old-fashioned way of marking what I have done here. I'm gonna mark some rows using some natural materials. Why not? Do things the old-fashioned way, right? So these rocks are not going to interfere with the growth, but they're going to remind me that there's something here. 
And if I need to, I'll use this video to remind me exactly what's here. I think I'll remember, but you know, I'm getting old. We'll see. All right. There we go. Okay, friends, so there you go. Onions and garlic. Who knows if it's going to work, but we'll find out together, right? I'll keep you updated on how things are going and uh, let me know in the comment section down below if you are growing garlic or onions for this fall. And uh, if so, am I doing it right? Am I doing it wrong? What should I be doing differently? Please share. I'd love to learn from you. Have a wonderful day in your garden, friends, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.